Welcome back to the Hot Slice. I am uh, Creative Director Josh Cowan. Along with me today, today is Executive Editor Denise Greer. <laughs> Hello, Denise. Hello, Josh. What's up? <laughs> you know, uh, just enjoying the spring weather that is coming our way right now. It's uh, lifted my mood tremendously. You know, been stuck the in this basement for a year. Been stuck in yeah. this basement for a year. You know, and uh, it's good to see some uh, some good weather and and some sunlight. We have just celebrated our one year of mm -hmm. magazines from yep. home. We're doing pizza today from the house. Yeah. So congratulations, May Josh. We have survived <laughs> one, one year, year of magazines at home. <laughs> yeah, May the May. Um, 2020 was the the first full issue we did at home yeah. and uh and you know while doing that of course you know everything falling apart around us you know and uh you got kids at home you got uh, yeah. things going everywhere so Absolutely. it was like um, i'm still surprised we got that issue done yeah. but uh, i'm very proud of that issue because we did get it done and yeah. uh, and like i said ever since then we've uh, we've knocked them out yeah absolutely and then we postponed shows and canceled mm -hmm. shows and then postponed shows again and now we have pizza expo in august so. august pizza expo so you know we haven't seen our pizza family our pizza family hasn't gotten oh, together in a couple of years but now we have a uh, pizza expo in august 17th through 19th and then yes. we'll go take a break for a month and then we'll see them again uh, October 3rd and 4th in Atlantic City for Pizza and Pasta Northeast. I so know. We'll be getting our feel of each other very soon. Yes, so. absolutely. And then we're going to follow that up with the next year in March again. And next so, year March. Uh, so we're, we're going to be back to back to back to back. Uh, Three shows within every... like six or seven months of each other. So that's going to be. I'm ready. I'm so I'm ready. So ready. <laughs> so ready to get out of this house. I'm so ready to get out of this office and eat pizza like mm -hmm. just eat other people's pizza now i've been eating pizza around town and that's fine yeah, and i've been that, eating um pizza that was sent to me my hometown yeah. my sister will bring me pizza from my hometown uh like take and bakes so at least yeah. i get a little bit of that too and i <laughs> i appreciate the, the pizza yeah and i appreciate the pizzerias that have sent us pizzas uh they've oh, been absolutely amazing. amazing so and i've got to photograph those but yeah, I, I'm ready to take pictures again, of course, taste pizza, but I'm ready to take some pictures again. And I think we're getting really close to it. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, I think so. I think we're getting ready. We're getting close to being able to travel to see you guys and, and to, to experience your pizzerias again and be out there. But for now, we're being able to do it from afar uh, through these interviews. And we actually get to talk to somebody from all the way across the country, <laughs> probably yeah. as far as you can go in Sonoma area california yeah. so uh so why don't you tell them who we talked yeah, to leah skirto she's uh she's runs pizza leah she just opened her business i think four days i think it was open four days before the lockdowns happened yeah yeah so like right before <laughs> yeah talk about a trial by fire there i mean my goodness yeah. so <laughs> so uh yeah we we talk all about that get into the get into meat and get into the meat of how you know how she managed that and Absolutely. Uh, but but you know if you've ever been in, in the pizza challenge area you've probably seen leah's face uh she's there yeah. every year competing and she was helping uh two years ago so uh she's always a, a pleasure to see to catch up with there and yeah. uh we've, we've missed her a lot so it's good to catch yeah, up today absolutely and she is a complete rock star pizza maker mm -hmm. she uh she's just brilliant um and she she'll blush when you say that but she is she's brilliant right, <laughs> so, right. yeah um, Pete, leah's going places for sure Absolutely. Well, let's just jump in and uh, talk to her about her one-year-old business right now. Sounds good. If you're looking for a POS provider that truly understands pizzerias, look no further than PDQ. Designed from the ground up for the exact needs of pizzerias, PDQ POS has been doing pizza ordering, delivery, and takeout for over 32 years. With all the functionality you need in today's environment, including online ordering, rewards, seamless integration, contactless functionality, and so much more, PDQ is your single source for, well, everything. Learn more today at pdqpos.com or call 877-968-6430. That's 877-968-6430. Performance Food Service is proud to deliver high-quality products, innovative technology, and custom operational solutions to restaurants of all sizes across the country. The flagship division of Performance Food Group, with deep roots in the restaurant industry, Performance Food Service has been the exclusive distributor of the Roma family of brands for more than 65 years. This signature relationship has allowed Performance Food Service to become a leader in the pizza and Italian segment of food service nationwide. Yeah, so as a new business owner, 
Wow. <laughs> um, I know. You know? Jump uh, into the fire. What, what a time to start. <laughs> tell us yeah, about, it's been pretty wild. Tell us what it's been like um, from when you opened until, until, until now. Well, I mean, lots of ups and downs, right? Yeah, so yeah. we opened and then four days later, the shelter in place order came down. Wow. So it was uh, a little disheartening. Um, just because I had, you know, it's like I had this whole plan of not being, not doing heavy takeout, not doing yeah. no delivery yeah. and actually like being a dine-in restaurant. Um, Oops. Which... <laughs> You know, the business plan went straight into the garbage, basically. Right. Yeah. And it was, but luckily with my background um, with Pizza My Heart, I'm very yeah. familiar with uh, the takeout business. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. it was, for me, it was a pretty easy transition to do. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, it wasn't like, the. F I was pretty bummed the first like couple of months, even though we were making sales and paying rent and paying mm -hmm. the employees, which as a new business, you're like, Oh shit, am I going to pay rent? Am I going to pay the employees? Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I was doing that, but I was kind of bummed out the entire time. And, you know, I geared my dough formula and my pizza around, you know, being a dine-in dine -in. Yeah. And, yeah. and kind of changed it, tweaked my formula a little bit to make it hold up in the box better. But yeah, everything you know i enjoy a well done crispy pizza and that's yeah. same. <laughs> what i want to make and people order it crispy or want it crispy and then it sits in a box for 20 30 minutes yeah. and it is not crispy anymore yeah so every time i was putting a pizza in a box for the first couple of months i was like oh. broken hearted a little <laughs> oh, bit so, no. you know? i know and you're a perfectionist you you you've got that style down you know you know what you're what you're good at and uh i mean you, people don't know this maybe uh, everyone should know you because in the industry you are a superstar um, yeah. but you and, know that, that you're a champion pizza maker and if you've ever been yeah to the back area of uh the international pizza challenge Definitely seeing Leah's face there all the time. It's really good to see. So, yeah. Thanks, well, guys. What did, what did you have to do to your dough to adapt it um, from what you wanted with that crispy dough to make it a good carryout dough? So I actually, um, I made a couple tweaks, and I don't, you know, I up my hydration just a little bit to yeah. try to get that crispiness going and I ended up moving into bulk fermentation mm -hmm. um, as opposed to uh, just uh, make the make the pizza and ball it and kind of feel like all of that helped with the development and the yeah. um, and the finished product sitting in a box a little bit longer um, Absolutely. so that was the, you know in the beginning there was a few tweaks happening here and there and trying to figure yeah. it out but well, the interesting thing is your customers, they, they probably didn't know because they've, exactly. they've only known your business probably as the, po as the during pandemic pizza that you provided. Right. Um, so how is that going to change once we shift? I won't say shift back because I think we're shifting forward into it. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows what's going to happen? Yeah. But, uh, I'll just say when dine-in opens again for you, yes. are you going to ship your pizza? No, I'm, I'm going to leave it as is because yeah. it didn't, I'm still happy with the product straight straight yeah. out of the um, straight out of the oven. Okay. In fact, yeah. maybe more happy with it. I think it was a yeah. good cha good changes I made all around. Yeah. Um. So I'm I'm happy about I'm it, I'm not going to change anything once we mm -hmm. go back. It's it, and I have a feeling um, that we're still going to be pretty heavy on takeout for a yeah. while. Yeah. And we have a patio out front, and the and you know today it's raining, but um, you know, we've had a pretty busy patio situation going since as long as we've been able to do outdoor dining. Yeah. And here in where I am in Sonoma County, uh, they just opened indoor uh, mm -hmm. last Sunday, um, I, which 25%. So for me, I don't have a large yeah. dining room. It's 12 it. chairs, which I just, <laughs> it's not really worth it. Not worth it. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to yeah, pay yeah, an employee we, more to maintain it, right? <laughs> exactly. But we yeah. did open an area so people could like sit and have a beer or a glass of wine while they're waiting. Um, yeah. what, days when it is raining, they don't have to wait outside. They can come mm -hmm. in and sit down if they're early. Um, yeah. We've been pretty tight on scheduling. Like 
the way we've been running things is literally giving people a time slot and a, to pick yeah. up. And sometimes people laugh at us because we're like, uh, we can't do five, but we can do five ten. And they're like, ha, ha, ha. and I'm like, yeah. no, 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 it's serious. <laughs> serious. Yeah, you, and we're you gotta, really punctual. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's good. That's good. Well, what I love about it is, I mean, you already had such a, you already brought like operations knowledge into running your restaurant before you ever opened, um, you know, from Pizza My Heart. Um, kind of what did you bring over from Pizza My Heart um, uh, when you started your operation? Because uh, I know that, that that's kind of been a, a good model for you to, um, uh, to grow as, as a career. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so for me, what I brought, because, you know, I kind of was gearing the, the, the actual business a little bit different yeah. than, than that, but all the knowledge I have for training mm-hmm. and, um, you know, putting, uh, systems into, into, yeah. in, into work for ordering and just mm-hmm. general management of, of how, how it should be run, um, and how the kitchen should be run and yeah. the staff, you know, a, a, custom pizza. My heart was huge on customer service. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that has been deeply ingrained in me, yeah. uh, and that's that's something that I definitely brought into Pizzeria from that. Absolutely, the Man, knowledge th- and how to treat customers and how to do things right and how to not worry about um, the little freebies and the little giveaways because mm-hmm. it's there's a yeah. bigger picture on that. The all stars that came out of uh, Pizza My Heart are amazing. Jeez. You got Tim Sylvie, you got Lars, you. I mean, yeah, yeah that's uh, oh. yeah, Justin. <laughs> Just, yeah, yeah, my goodness. They're like I mean. growing pizzeria <laughs> operators left and right out there. <laughs> so. I know. Well, listen, the, the Chuck Hammers, the owner, is, um, I mean, the, the knowledge that guy has of running a business is just insane. Yeah. And he, the autonomy that he allows, he allows for people to grow, you know, yeah. and he allows for people to make their mistakes and not be the end of the mm-hmm. world. Um, and the guidance, and he's definitely giving me guidance through this whole process. Yeah. Um, even when I was working in the beginning, like, okay, he gave me a punch list of here's the permits you need and here's the people you need to call and how to set up your LLC and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Like he was super supportive and helpful and still is like, I have some questions. I'm probably going to hit him up tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome that's now fantastic. what kind of operator do you think you are now that now that you're in a little bit you know you've got you got a year under your belt now um what kind of operator do you think you are um and and how how you are with your staff you um you know like i said i tried to carry some of that culture i learned from pizza my heart into this um and i just try i guess to a certain extent try to emulate what mm-hmm. i had at pizza my heart and the way it was because it was it was work as a team and not as mm-hmm. an individual yeah. and everything is everyone's job and every, you know, you may be up front, but that yeah. doesn't mean you, you ignore the back and it doesn't mean that you aren't responsible for everything that happens. So I try to cross train everybody. Mm-hmm. I try to empower everybody. Um, I've been training, uh, I have a heavy, um, heavy on the uh women's in my staff so there's, awesome. i think there's i only have like three dudes working for me everybody else <laughs> even my kitchen staff is mostly Ooh. women um it. so i've been trying to train them and empower them a little bit and mm-hmm. make sure you know make sure that they know that they can, they can do everything i've been training the the um ladies i have up front to be supervisors and work ovens and make mm-hmm. pizzas and just share all the knowledge yeah. That's, and that, that's what I'm, that's what I'm trying to do. So you I think, hope I'm doing that and making that work for them, but. Yeah, absolutely. And you've become quite the, you know, you've taken a leadership role in advancing uh, women in the pizzeria industry. Um, kind of t- talk a little bit about that, about what, uh, what you've been doing in your shop and even outside of your shop to, um, to really, you know, harness, um, the power of women in our industry, because uh, you know it's it's one of those things where there aren't a huge amount at the surface level, but there are there are a lot of yeah. women in our industry, um, and so bringing that to the forefront, I think, is really vital right now. 
You know, so for me, I've always sort of been, like even as a kid, um, you know, I was oftentimes the only girl on the baseball team mm -hmm. or the soccer team. Um, yeah. So I was kind of used to that role. And whenever I'd see another girl playing or on another team, I'd always mm -hmm. be like, hey, yeah, you know, like me and you, dude. <laughs> you know? And so I kind of tried to yeah, yeah. <laughs> like my default even you yeah. know like, right. yeah so I tried to I've always tried to do that like at pizza expo and because there, there mm -hmm. were very few women competing so whenever I'd see yeah. another another woman back there getting ready to compete I'd always make sure to be like hey let's talk yeah. and let's connect um just because to get that camaraderie a little bit mm -hmm. you know like yeah. i don't know who you are where you're from but i'm gonna come over and say hi and be nice just, and bring you a beer yeah. i don't know just if you general notice, support yeah. always have a yeah. backpack full of beer at pizza expo <laughs> yeah, <laughs> i have to remember that. that i, I, I know am that. totally now, gonna now we know that, that. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be looking for leah all over the show floor i'm like oh, I need a beer. <laughs> about two o'clock about two o'clock let's go find leah <laughs> exactly if you see beers stashed in a cooler in the competition area they're probably mine. i love that are they craft beers or are they what, what kind of beer are you drinking <laughs> hey, you know it depends but it's often like a pbr or oh, nice. budweiser or something yeah. <laughs> easy can cans that are easy to go and don't get me yeah. wrong yeah. if you don't want to find the craft beer you find uh lars or sean dempsey oh those, yeah those guys will have a cooler full of craft beer <laughs> oh there, and now i see you now i know that too uh no, yeah what was it ppne 2019 uh, the women came out and took it. I yeah. mean, they, they won several categories. It was one of the, yeah. it was one of the highlights for me to see that, um, to see how many women um, won first, second or third in all the divisions. Like it, it was a, a really neat thing to see. So we'll hopefully, yeah. uh, you know, we've got Pete's Expo 21. Are you, are you competing this year? Yeah, I signed up to compete. Um, at last, so in the last expo, I guess, what was it, 19? 19. 19. Yeah. yeah. 19. So I worked the competition area with Lamarca's team yeah. because I didn't have anybody to represent. So I, he, he, he reached out and said, Hey, you know, everything that happens because you've been doing this for so yeah. long. So you want to come and help out. And it was so much fun. And yeah. I was actually debating a little bit, like, should I do that again? Or yeah. should yeah. I compete? Because com competing is great for myself, but it was like, I had so much fun. I got to talk to everybody. I got to mm -hmm. see everybody. I had video and pictures of everyone's pizzas, which was just a ton of fun as well. Yeah. Way less pressure. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was, it, was, it was just 100% fun and where, yeah, I wasn't nervous or anxious at any mm -hmm. point during the expo. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to compete this year. I signed up, um, yeah. you know, so hopefully everything works out, the stars align, and we're actually able to go do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, with the I new dates, we I, I think, think we're, we're going to be able to do good. it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's I'm the first hoping. dates I've been positive about in two yeah. years. So. August, I, I actually, I'm so positive. I actually set my vacation a month after that to actually go <laughs> somewhere. Nice. So that's how confident I am about. <laughs> so. nice. well, yeah, uh, I feel like I need a little redemption too, because that that last uh, Atlantic City competition was probably the worst pizza I've made ever. Oh, no. in a competition. <laughs> <laughs> was, well, tell us about it. What, was not, not everybody can be on. <laughs> well, yeah, tell us about what happened. Yeah. Why, why, why was it bad? I think my dough was just, so I traveled to, it's a long trip across yeah. the country, right? So <laughs> yeah. I made, my, and I didn't have a lot of time. So uh -huh. I made my dough ahead of time, traveled to New York, stayed at a friend of mine's house in Brooklyn, um, mm -hmm. and then met up with Lars and Christina Mm -hmm. um in the morning they flew in and picked me up and drove to atlantic city and then that's a lot so of stuff. it's just like the whole time i'm like working dough management trying, oh that's not right yeah. it's rising there you're gonna, you know temperature, temperature. Okay, you need to make new dough i don't know yeah. and then the day of the competition i just i didn't pull it out in time yeah and because i'd been keep trying to keep it so cold so it wouldn't overproof yeah and then it just never rose that day and it was flat and chewy and tough and oh yeah like uh, as i was making the pizza i was like i should just walk away but i'm gonna continue <laughs> redemption like, there's no chance yeah. i'm winning anything with this redemption <laughs> pizza redemption expo tour. 21 yeah. there we go yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll we'll expect big things from you exactly. um, listen if i make a neat a nice pizza i'll be stoked <laughs> yeah point. what category are you going to compete in what category uh, are you doing non-traditional non-traditional cool yeah 
Have you been working on what you're doing? Uh, do you already have your, or are you still testing a few different ideas? I got a few, because I've been doing a ton of farmer's market specials yeah. um, all, uh, all year long. Mm -hmm. um, so I have a couple and I'm excited that it's in it actually the August thing kind of pushed my mindset yeah. a little bit because I was in for planning for July and thinking to okay, what's seasonal in July and now I got it yeah. and for the most part or June for June. the most part everything's yeah. a, June to August is the same but I'm like yeah you know I was toying with the idea of a peach pizza and I don't know if we'll still have the peaches mm -hmm. I want to use in yeah. August yeah. we'll have the late late harvest maybe Maybe um, there's a great peach farm up here mm -hmm. uh, called Dry Creek Peach. That it's just some of the most incredible peaches I've ever had in my life. Oh, wow. um, small little boutique organic peach farm. I'm oh, wow. 100% with oh. peaches on, on pizza. I love oh, I am too. I am <laughs> yeah. too. Some people are haters of that, and I, I, mean, I love peaches love on it. pizza. Oh, it's so oh. good. Oh, Me yeah. too. I that's They're amazing. Excellent. So I've, I've noticed over, you know, the last actually couple of years, uh, 2018, 2019, the growth in women competing at the challenges. I mean, it, it feels like it's double, tripled than what it was in you know, 2015. Yeah. It has been winning too, yeah. you know? And yeah, we can't absolutely. listen. We got to shout out Jane Mines, right? Oh, yep. Yes, Jane. Trailblazer Natalie. right there. <laughs> it was just always, always in the finals. Always. We got to get her on the show. We got to get yeah. her on yeah. the show soon. <laughs> no, I haven't heard from them in a while. I don't yeah. know where yeah, they're at either. or what's going on. Yeah. Um, yeah. I know they're both, she and her husband were both battling some health problems. Yeah. But, you could always um, pencil her in. Well. You could always pencil <laughs> her in for a, a victory or a second place or something like right yeah. at the top all yeah. the time. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know, I, I'm curious because, you know, you're such a, you were such a strong pizza maker. Um, and then when you transition to ownership, are you still able to do a lot of that creative maker um, activities or are you more focused on the business sides of things? Well, or you both. know, <laughs> I, here's the thing, because, because of the, I would like to have a little more time to do other things, but I'm, Basically in the kitchen, I should probably put a little more effort into the ownership part of it, but I, I'm trying to keep a tight staff during COVID mm -hmm. and not have as many people in here in the beginning, it, keeping it tight as possible. It was, I was more, I was in the kitchen. I still am. I mean, I yeah. came in at eight this morning and was doing prep until we got on the phone here. Um, yeah. I, I, you know, I have a prep cook in here, but there's more than anyway. So yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm in the kitchen constantly and I, what I probably need to do is put a little more time into the other side of it. Yeah. Um, then that's why I don't, you know, we're closed Mondays, but I'm in here Monday, yeah. you know, doing my paperwork and catching up on that sort of thing and doing all the stuff I should have been doing throughout the week. And <laughs> I gotcha. I gotcha. I don't think anybody will ever understand uh, unless they've owned a business of how many hours you put in, especially that first year of your business, you know, what, how many hours do you think you put in a week? Uh, in your business. Oh. I'm very curious. What's, uh, what's like, what's 12 times seven? <laughs> <laughs> a lot. It's a lot. A lot. <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> I mean, I'm literally here. I finally worked it out where Wednesdays and Thursdays, I'm only in the restaurant for about nine hours. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I go it? home. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Glad um, you love what you do. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But I, I've pretty much spent the whole 12 plus hours um, for the last year, every single day wow. in here. Oh, wow. Um, and do you yeah. think that would have been different if, if COVID hadn't happened? You know, um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you say you fart through your business plan and the, the trash, basically. Okay. So do you think that would have happened or would have shook out that way? Yeah, I think it would have been, it, it may not have been the entire year, but yeah, I know. For, I mean, I've opened a bunch of restaurants, um, not as an owner, but with Pizza mm -hmm. My Heart. I was part of, you know, 20 something restaurant openings. Yeah. And I know that you got to be there, you know, at least the first few months mm -hmm. all the time, constantly. So I was prepared for that and, and, and mentally prepared to be here a lot. I wasn't prepared for the emotional toll that the COVID was going to add into that. Um, but I definitely knew I'd be putting in hours. And I think originally my thought was, I'll do this 
all day every day for six months you know mm -hmm. and but the goal would be to get a staff get a manager get a full kitchen mm -hmm. crew going and then we just i was never able to do that yeah um, and to it felt like i shouldn't do that also yeah you know survival was, mode <laughs> yeah exactly the survival yeah. mode but now at this point as things are moving in the right direction that's my goal here now um I basically need one more person in the kitchen mm -hmm. and then just need to train the couple people who have already been training a little bit more and that will free me up to um do other things and you know yeah, yeah. I, and and we're all of course taking it a day at a time right now because it's yeah. so fluid <laughs> but you know uh say things could continue in this tra trajectory what do you see you know in the late part of the year what are your kind of what are some of your goals as far as Pizza Leah goes. Um, you know, God, it's so tough to look forward. Right. <laughs> right. I know. We never, it, I, another thing that we're going to have to deal with is we never really operated with a full dining room. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, the first four days, it wasn't that busy. You know, the mm -hmm. first four days you open a restaurant, you're not, you're not <laughs> done like you are. So we're going to, my goal is to keep working on training and training the staff how to operate in the original mode that we were intended you know yeah so there's still a lot of there's still a lot of transition that needs to happen for me so looking past that um you know i'd just be happy with a day off <laughs> getting back to square one and a day off there we go yeah, a day off i there. love it i my, love my it staff, i my, i couldn't be more stoked on my staff they're so great and they're so motivated and to do, do right and to be part of this and yeah. i'm just so thankful for them all you got any rising rock stars coming up through the through the ranks that you're gonna you know debut maybe at future pizza expos maybe if i can convince him into it i got this one cook alex and he's he's been making pizzas as long as i have mm -hmm. um he's worked at every pizzeria around the you know he's worked for the mary's pizza shack and the uh -huh. mambo's and uh all the pizzerias that the, the northern california chains and that sort of thing and man the guy is just killer and yeah i try to talk to him all the time and he's like no oh, but i you know, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I know you got to do this. Come with me. Well, yeah. you're a perfect mentor for that. I mean, like, yeah, so I've been competing a long time. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you know, something I was curious about too is uh, you've been getting a lot of press. You've been getting a lot of like, um, you know, little awards and things locally, and even you know, recognized nationally. Um, yeah. You know, wow. do you do you see bumps when those things happen, or um, kind of are you able to gauge those? um a hundred percent and i didn't know about any of them coming out really <laughs> you're and like oh we are we're in that <laughs> <laughs> yeah one article um a local chef here uh chef preeti mm -hmm. um gave me a heads up that i was going to be ha have a mention in the chronicle which is the big San yeah. San Francisco newspaper and i was like oh cool you know i had no idea it was going to be um a large article yeah. on the best uh pizzerias in the bay area yes uh, and so I, we were slammed that whole weekend and oh, i gosh. was totally unprepared for that <laughs> <laughs> like, <oops. laughs> but, yeah so i didn't know and the, the last one that came out um i knew about because they wanted to come up and do an actual photo shoot for so yeah. that one i prepped for scheduled extra people for um but it was i mean i was taken aback by all of those i had no yeah. idea that yeah. i was on anybody's radar um in that regards you know i was just had my head down working making pizzas trying to mm -hmm. you know navigate the covid thing and um that was it was it was wild right and, and that's just what what <laughs> Who, me? What? that says a lot for your pizza you didn't yeah. seek out this uh no. these uh these claims so and then they found you so that says a lot for your pizza and yeah just, well thanks just wait until your dining room's open and mm -hmm. you have those things come out because i know that when the 101 um 
pizza, best pizzas in the country, when that comes out, like people's uh, dining rooms get flooded. I mean, completely flooded for oh, yeah. that that first little bit when those come out. So we were, uh, it's just yeah, always we fun to watch. On that. Yeah. For, oh, yeah. Eat, for takeout, we had people, uh, I mean, we, uh, Tony Hawk came in. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, Tony <laughs> Hawk in your restaurant. Like, yeah. Um, yeah Did he crazy. review it? Did he give no, you a review? No, no. <laughs> he was up here. He was up here for something else. There's a he. I see him. I follow him on Instagram, so I see him over. There's a. a I think they got two Michelin star restaurants in Healdsburg called Single Thread. Okay. And he apparently comes up all the time to go eat at Single Thread. Oh wow! But um, right after that 101, uh, rest, pizza restaurants came out. He came in here like after his meal at single thread we were i was tripping out i was like i've been nervous <laughs> cooking pizzas before but like yeah. i was nervous cooking his like yeah. I, don't, I don't care about celebrities yeah. that much yeah. you know like yeah, i've seen some of cook for some 49ers yeah. and some san jose sharks peoples down oh, at he's a legend though yeah dude <laughs> i was like Woo, tony hawk's in here what kind of so, pizza did he get what pizza did he get they got a, it was, so he was here with his son and another guy who's another chef from San Diego. Um, mm -hmm. They got a, I don't even remember actually, they got a plain cheese and then, you know, I don't remember the other yeah. couple. They just, they ordered <laughs> off the menu, they ordered a plain cheese and a couple pies off the menu, but it was, oh, wow. you know, I was trying to like play it cool, you know, oh, like yeah. don't, right. don't ask for his autograph. <laughs> <laughs> don't stumble you know. over words no no yeah. <laughs> but so it was it was it was crazy because people were coming in so oh, you know they, and then this is a tourist area you know mm -hmm. we're in wine country sonoma yeah. sonoma county wine country so there is a lot of tourists a lot of people from out of town who are in town for wine tasting that mm -hmm. were coming in because of that oh we read the newspaper and we got to try you guys and yeah so is there a potential with uh, off-premise sales with all the, the wine? Because um, I just think there's a lot, so much wine culture and wine business happening out there. Um, is there, is there off-premise opportunities for you out there? Absolutely. And I've, it, I've unfortunately haven't, I've been approached by a couple of different wineries mm -hmm. up here. And here's the thing, because there's the Munyaini, the wood fire okay. oven company. Oh is yeah, in is in Healdsburg. It's which is five minutes mm -hmm. away. It's the next town north from where I am. Uh, so everybody in all the wineries got uh, wood fired ovens in their on their oh, yeah. properties. Yeah. So oh, okay, there's, gotcha. Um, there's a lot of opportunity for that, and I just again keeping my staff tight and mm -hmm. me being so busy, I haven't been able to schedule any of those. But I got a lot of those that I'd love to be able to do. Yeah, um, those connections. And that, so that, going back to the goals, that's actually a goal is to yeah. free me up on Sundays so that, cause most of those are, mm -hmm. you know, people want you on Saturday or Sunday when the, on the weekends when everybody's mm -hmm. in town for tasting. Yeah. So uh, that's another goal is for me to be able to do that sort of thing. And those are not necessarily going to be huge money makers, marketing. but they're <laughs> fun and they're marketing. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Marketing. You're out, you're face to face with the public, yeah. making pizzas, drinking wine. And you're such you know. a big name in pizza. Like when you think of uh, great culinary uh, pizza folks, I mean, your name is right up there. So like they would be honored to be able to have you, you know, cooking on their, on their wine, in their wineries. So it's good for them. It's good for you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, mutually. Thanks. <laughs> absolutely. It makes me uncomfortable a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> just, just accept it. Just accept it. Just be like, I, I, I rock. I'm sorry. Yeah, I do. You're a pizza star. Just accept it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, you know, uh, John Arena had um, interviewed you for a previous issue, and I'm probably going to put it down in the show notes uh, because uh, you had some great things to say in there about about your dough, and you even offered a base dough. So, guys, if you go to pizzaday.com, you will get a base dough <laughs> um, from Leah. Um, so, you know, when what advice, because I know that you've, you've kind of mentored other people, you know, what advice do you have for people that are like trying to develop their own um, take on, on dough? Just, it, it's going to take a lot of time. Yeah. Don't get frustrated if you don't get it right the first time. I mean, you know, even I'm, I'm constantly working on different dough formulas and seeing what it does to the end result 
um, you may settle on a on a formula for your restaurant, but there's little tweaks you can make and uh, keep try keep keep playing. That's mm -hmm. my advice: is don't yeah. get frustrated if it takes a long time to get where you want to go, um, and keep playing with it constantly because there's always you can always improve. There's always things you can do better or learn. Mm -hmm. um, don't don't just settle on on one thing. Yeah. Is my 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 best suggestion. That's Patience. Awesome. It always goes back to have being patient with the with the product for sure. Yeah, and I am not a patient person. <laughs> it's something <laughs> you have to learn. Sure. Yeah, same oh here. Oh my god. Same here. I'm not patient at all. I want it when now. I was learning, um, first learning pan pizzas. Uh, There's it, a patient. Like, oh my god, it was it was it killed me. I was constantly yeah. cooking stuff off too early. Mm -hmm. not wait, not waiting that's a patient and, style. and i'm like and then getting frustrated that it wasn't happening the way i wanted and i wasn't getting the results that i should uh, but it's plain and simple it's just because i have no patience and i'm yeah. all about immediate gratification right <laughs> which in pan, the pan world is not gonna work <laughs> that's fun well we won't take up a huge any more of your time except for i'll go out on one question um you know if there's listeners out here that maybe haven't opened their own restaurant or maybe they're pizza makers and they want to open their restaurant um kind of what advice do you have for them uh based on you know what you've experienced oh god don't do it <laughs> <laughs> run now run away run away don't do it <laughs> yes but so my whole family's been in the restaurant industry Mm -hmm. Um, and my dad used to tell us all the time, both me, my brother and I don't go into the restaurant industry. Don't do it. Don't do it. We both did it, of course, you know, but, um, it's tough, you know, don't, don't, you can't just assume you're going to be successful. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think, I don't think a lot of people understand the hours, um, yeah. that it requires sometimes and, and the, the sacrifices you have to make of not seeing family not being available on holidays um you know there's not a summer vacation so yeah absolutely so don't do it so just much. don't do it don't do it just enjoy being a pizza maker yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or a gm or whatever you are just, just write it out <laughs> So, well, that's great. Well, thank you so much for sharing yes, just you. all of your knowledge. We we really appreciate it, and we can't wait to try your pizza at Pizza Expo. See you in August, Thanks, guys. This I know. See August you, nice time. to see you guys. It's been. Yeah. It's been a I, long know. Time, so. I know. I know. At least this, we get to we get to see you. Uh, you know, without we we can't all hug our, our our pizza people, but we can at least see you guys on the show. Yes. So, that's good. <laughs> All right. Good seeing you. Good seeing Thanks, you. Take care. Best of luck this summer. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.